their emotions are numb, their hearts in despair, not knowing if they'll even survive. We are the Welcome to City Church of Dallas. We are seven months old and we're getting ready. We're about a half an hour before we start the service. Our services are Sundays at five. And I thank Alex Voss and his crew for filming these videos. I hope they bless you. They've gone around the world. So pray for us and visit us at 3601 Ruth Street, R-O-U-T-H in Dallas, Texas, 75219 every Sunday for our worship service at five o'clock and our Tuesday night experience at 7.30. Hold us up. Pray for us. CityChurchOfDallas.com. God bless you. Woo! <laughs> I wonder how many songs. That's so awesome, Janice. I wonder how many that I've written that I don't remember. It grows every day. <laughs> That's so good. Love it. I want to talk to you about uh, something that, that is uh, kind of on my heart right now, just for a few minutes, and they're going to hear some more from Janice. Um, Dad Miller, you were in World War II, and in World War II, they coined a phrase that called the point of no return. And you were in the Navy. Tell us what that meant in World, World War II. Well, actually, um, the Navy didn't coin the phrase. Air Force. Air Force did. Uh, the pilots in the early part of the war, um, they were flying missions that were uncertain. And when they reached a certain place, they had to figure their gasoline. They didn't know whether they had enough gas to get back. So there was a spot in their travels that they knew when they reached that spot, there was no return after that. Well, that kind of applies to the Navy too, because we were in the Pacific Ocean and that's miles and miles across that baby. And, um, Anyway, we knew, uh, we knew that when we got to a certain point, there was no turning back if we didn't have the fuel. But you know, I thought about that in biblical terms, and there's a guy named Jonah. You know, in his life, he reached a point of no return. And so I thought after thinking about the point of no return, don't we all? Don't we all reach that point in oh, our lives? Oh, yes. And uh, I think maybe God has those points too where there's a point of no return. Yes. Go on. <laughs> but you know, he has the Holy Spirit drawing us yes, amen. constantly. 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 Yeah. But I think sometimes he looks at us and the way we're thinking and the way we're talking. What we do in life, well, sometimes we just don't testify enough for you. And I got that out of her comment today, tonight when she was singing that song. And I thought, you know, do we testify enough? Yeah, I have a, young, a man that's a good friend of mine that's in the hospital in Grapevine right now. I mean, he had a stroke. And do you know, I've just, my heart has been, want to just pray, pray, pray. And thank God 
that he is a healer in God. Because sometimes in life, even physically, we reach a point of no return. And I think about some of the things uh, that I did to my poor old body when work and diff different things that I traveled from time to time. And I thought, boy, when I come down with some of the things I have, I think I did that myself. There was a point of return in that too. You know, so the point of no return is going so far, let's say you have a full tank of fuel in your airplane, yes. and you're going across the Atlantic Ocean, and you have enough to get across, yes. and you went, once you pass that halfway mark and get a little past that, it's closer to go ahead and make the journey yes. than to turn around and go back. That's called the point yes. of no return. Yes. Is that right? Absolutely. Do you know I um, wrote a book by that title, a Broadway show by that title, and a movie by that title, all based on what you're talking about. You wrote it? No, not me. Oh. <laughs> no. We sure did. We're still doing it. <laughs> no, but if they'll write it, I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how many feel like you're going through something and it's, it, there's some difficulty involved with what you're going through right now? Let me see your hand. I'm going to raise up my foot and both hands. Sometimes you're going through something and it's really hard. And sometimes you're going through something and you're not completely, totally invested in it. Have you heard the, the term, go for broke? Uh -huh. that's, the, that's what Angie, Didi, and I did when we started the church. We, we, just, we got so far into it, and probably right around, we, we were committed from the beginning, but probably right around December, November, December, when we knew we found this place and we knew we wanted to, 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 to go for it, we went for broke. We were past the point of no return and we fully invested ourselves into it and probably about nine months into city church i felt that sense of permanence uh, probably around may i felt like we are here we're here we we we, we birthed we birthed together with you we birthed it didn't we yeah. so there, there's a place of a point of no return in your life this year July 2nd, which was Monday week, uh, a week ago Monday, was the exact center of the year. The exact middle of the year. This is an eventful year. At the beginning of this year, I told you that 12 was a number of divine government, where things begin to get in order in our lives with God leading it. Uh, Isaiah 6 says, in the year that King Uzziah died, uh, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. In the year 2012, when King Uzziah, man ruling and, and flesh ruling, when that finally comes to an end in our lives and that dies and we understand I am not my own, but I belong to the Lord. He bought me with a price. Amen. Yeah. And I begin to give him rule and reign where the king has dominion. I begin to walk in the kingdom of God that is within me. I begin to walk in divine governmental order. Something shifts and takes place place there's a new level of ordination a new level of blessing a new level of favor in my life so I don't want you to give up halfway through what God is working in your life I know that sometimes things are really, really difficult. There are things in my life that are very difficult right now. There are things in your life that are very hard right now. But I want to encourage you. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap 
if you yes, faint yes, not. Yes. While we are here in the middle of the year, in the middle of, of giving our lives completely to the Lord, where he rules and reigns in our lives. How many are in that process? Let me see your hand. Yes. I am. I am in that process. Yes. And, and, and when we get to that place, I like to call that in the midst, in the middle. But we are past the point of no return. We're going all the way. We're going to go for broke. Is there a witness in this place? I'm not. He didn't halfway save me. I'm not going to halfway praise him. But all that's within me is going to bless his holy name. He didn't halfway uh, buy me and purchase me. So I'm not going to halfway give my life to him. But I'm giving it all, all the way to him. Amen. So, so while we are here in the middle, in the process, I want to encourage you. The words in the midst were are, are in the Bible, the King James Bible, the correct version. <laughs> I use it because that's yeah, I learned so many memory voices growing up as a holy roller, snotty kid. So I, I, I learned, that's how I learned, that's what I've memorized, so I use a King James. Because that's what God says. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, in the midst is in the Bible 309 times. In the middle. It means in the middle. In the center. In the middle. Uh, Exodus 3, 2 through 4 says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire. From the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will turn now aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Exodus 24 16 through 18. It'll be so nice when we have screens and I don't have to like quickly turn somewhere, you know. But in the midst, while we're waiting on that, we're not going to be discouraged. 24, Exodus 24, 16. Talking about God speaking to us in the middle. Okay. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights then the Lord spoke to Moses I want to encourage you that while you are in the middle of the trouble while you are in the middle of the storm while you are in the middle of the valley, while you are in the middle of the disease, while you are in the middle of the sickness, while you are in the middle of the, of the discouragement, while you are in the middle of the dilemma, while you are in the middle of the relationship problem, while you are in the middle of the career mess, I want you to tune your ear to the Holy Spirit because God talks to us in the middle. Is there a witness in this place? God delivers us in the middle. Exodus 15, 19. For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought back. Anybody have any enemies? You do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Not against people. But against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon. It might have been formed. It might be sitting ready to ambush you. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 
For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. God, in the middle of what you're going through, lift up your eyes whence cometh your help, because God will deliver you in the middle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Woo! Daniel 3, 24 through 26. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished as he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fire of furnace and saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. You have not been promised that you will not go through the fire. You have not been promised that you will not have to endure things. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Not some of them, but out of all of them. That's why we can lay our head on the pillow at night knowing all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Sorry for spitting on the first two rows. I took a towel off sinus. I got cotton mouth. <laughs> well, what that really is is the anointing. All right. <laughs> You on the third and fourth row, you missed out. <laughs> Isn't it weird that our back row is the fifth row? <laughs> That's usually the front in church, isn't it? <laughs> oh, despise not the day of small beginnings. All right. And number three, number one, God speaks to us in the middle. Number two, he delivers us in the middle. And number three, he atones us in the middle. Leviticus 16, 16. Not my favorite book of the Bible, but I will read it when forced. <laughs> what was that reference again? 16, 16. This is a good one, y'all. This is a good Leviticus scripture. They're all good. I just like bacon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions for all their sins and so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness the son of God Jesus Christ himself God in the flesh was in the middle of two thieves on a cross making atonement in the middle of your transgressions leviticus says he is making atonement 
for you. For every accusation that comes against you, there is the voice of the blood of a Savior that is crying out louder than any other accusation. I want you to know that you don't need atonement when you're not doing anything wrong, but in the middle of sin, in the middle of transgressions, there is atonement for you. He's already paid the price. Janice, I was thinking of uh, when you, when you, that's, you sang that song that I, I tried to, I do remember it. But I just remembered another song that, that I, one of the first songs I ever wrote, and, and, I, and I, I forgot about it. And I could parade my successes and keep the hurt inside. That's the wrong song, but that's a good one too. <laughs> he can't ignite a million stars and hang them all in space. Orchestrate the heavens and keep the sun in place. He can change the seasons, turn the winter into spring. It seems we serve the God that can do most anything, but he can't turn his back on me when I fall and fall again. After he applies the blood, he cannot see my sin. He can't lie to his children. His word is always true. I'm forever grateful for the things that God can't do. In the middle of our transgression, in the middle of our sin, there is atonement. If you're thankful that every day that you wake up, there is new mercy for you, somebody give the Lord praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Come and help me. Psalm 103. Two through three. I googled this week, preparing this message, the center scripture in the Bible. Now, if there were an odd number of verses in the Bible, then there would be a middle verse. Because there would be an even number on each side. But because there's an even number of verses in the Bible, there are two center verses. Psalm 103, 2 and 3, in the middle. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your <laughs> diseases. God will meet you in the middle. Is there a witness in this place? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. When I'm weary in my mind, when I'm tired in my thinking, when I want to complain, I have to tell my mind, bless him, bless him, bless him, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I looked up the word all. Yes, it means all, but it means any and every one. Forget not any of his benefits. Don't forget even one of his benefits benefits. To forget means to be oblivious of. Oblivious means not aware of or not concerned about what is happening around one. Bless the Lord oh my mind, oh my emotions and forget not, do not be oblivious of all, every one, each one of his benefits. Benefits means the act of goodwill or goodness. Someone being good to you. I looked at the word benefits in Webster's Dictionary and one of the definitions is provision in the time of sickness. <laughs> Forget not all the benefits he's done. Forget not all the benefits he will do. Stand to your feet in this place and let's worship.
are in this place, Steve, come up, Aaron, come up, Angie, come up, Brother Sister Miller, come up. If you are in this place and you need special prayer, now is the time. If you want us to agree with you, Jesus promised where two or three agree, where he's, we're gathered in his name, he's there in the midst of them. And whatever we would agree on, as touching with our faith, anything that we ask, it shall be done by the Father which is in heaven. If you need prayer, you need agreed prayer, these are your altars or this carpet-like altar. <laughs> Step out of your seat. Come up. Yeah. We're going to pray for you. Come on. about everybody in here but if you're not living for the Lord if you've not put your faith in Jesus Christ Romans 10 said Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for right standing with God but if you will believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and if you will confess that faith in him with your mouth. The Bible says that you are saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed, Romans 10 says. So if you are not living for God, but you want that born again experience, and you want to give your life to the Lord, just lift up your hand right now so I can see it. There's no sense of going one day without Jesus leading your life. Anybody? I want you to get ready. Come back up here. Sing a couple more songs for us. Two or three more songs. We love you so much. And your CDs are where? Out there? Her CDs are in the back of her trunk. <laughs> like any good evangelist has them. They're right here. Okay, she's going to be right back there. Right there where, where Ashlyn is right there. Um, after service, her and Lisa to sell those CDs and you, everybody needs it. They're really, I mean, it's really, 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 really soulful, anointed, and good. It's really, really, really good. I promise you, you will not make a mistake buying that CD. And we need to support her, right? So Lisa and Janice have We Ministries, and they're the only full time ministry. I travel out of this church, but they're their only full time ministry that operates out of this church that that depends 
on people giving and sowing. And they go all around the country. In the last couple of months, they've been to Oregon, they've been to Vancouver, they've been to uh, um, Knoxville, they've been to uh, Indiana, they've been to Florida ministering. Uh, they've been so many places. And we are their home church. This is their church. City Church is their church. I'm their pastor. And we need to honor the Lord. I know it's tight for a lot of us, but we need to honor the Lord by honoring the gifts that he's given this house. So we want to bless them. So we're only going to receive one offering today. But what I want you to do, City Church, we're 11 and a half months old. We need money this week, just like last week, just like next week. So, and we, and we need plenty. So just let God speak to you. If it's a tithe and offering, put it on your envelope. If you want to split some up and give tithe and offering and then give an offering to Janice. If you're visiting and you just want to give an offering to Janice, of course, we under, completely welcome that. And make sure you bless Janice and Lisa really, really good. If you're making a check, make it to City Church of Dallas. Come on in. If you're making a check, make it to City Church of Dallas. Okay, and um, and um, if you need to write it on a credit card or debit card, put it on that. Uh, come here, my brother. Come here. You're, are you a ball player, football player? You were a football player. Yeah. Once upon a time, for the Saints? Yes. And I hear you've got some... Some jaw cancer. Correct. Jaw cancer. And in your leg. Um, I want to testify for just a minute. We just preached a sermon that said, Psalm 103, 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who heals all our diseases. One of the definitions of benefits is provision in the time of sickness. Yes. Nothing we can do can earn healing from the Lord, but the same blood that saves us heals us. He personally took stripes upon his back for your healing. There's a man right there. He's had one kidney for four or five decades, been burned alive aneurysm, blood clots, heart attacks, esophagus cancer, liver cancer, and just got the notice, cancer free after two or three years, cancer free. That lady right over there, Angie Miller Wadley. Angie was on June the 3rd, 2010, Come here, Angie. Tell him what happened. Tell us what happened. And it encourages him. June 2010, I woke up with a excruciating headache and was rushed to Louisville Hospital, where I was conscious at the time and I was told I had a brain bleed. I was rushed to Baylor Hospital downtown Dallas, where I spent weeks in ICU with a ruptured brain aneurysm. 50% of people don't make it to a hospital. Now that 50%, 25% don't leave the hospital alive. Only 2% have no effects. I'm in that 2%. Had no brain damage. I didn't have to have any physical therapy. I didn't have to have any speech therapy. So I want to encourage you. I know you're battling your body. But the same God that raised me up from the dead and restored me unto health and healed every wound in my body is the same great physician for you tonight. If you're sick in your body, I want to encourage you to stir up your faith. He's healer. His name is above jaw cancer. His name is above cancer. His name is above diabetes. His name is above every name. There's healing in this house for you tonight. I believe that God's going to touch your body. For he said, by his stripes, you are the healed of God. I believe. 